another option for forest mushroom cultivation is the Stropharia mushroom. Its Latin name is Stropharia rugosa annulata. Um, the uh, common name is often garden giant or the red wine cap mushroom, and that's because the caps can actually grow almost as big as a dinner plate sometimes. And these are really gorgeous red capped mushrooms. They have dark gills on the underside and they taste very much like a portobello. Um, and they are native to North America, so you can find them in the wild. Um, these mushrooms, unlike our other species we've been talking about, have um, a tendency to prefer growing in wood chips or straw. Uh, we've had the best luck growing them in sawdust and wood chip mixtures. Uh, and these can be grown in the forest, but also actually in partial shade or even garden conditions as well. Um, so uh, the stropharia are quite adaptive. Uh, they, as long as they have a hardwood wood chip, so you don't want to use pine wood chips or cedar or something like that, as long as you have hardwood wood chips, um, they can grow almost anywhere in your garden or on your farm. What we'd want to do is, is again, acquiring the substrates really important. So the, the substrates being uh, hardwood sawdust, which often you can get from a furniture manufacturer or sometimes a sawmill. Um, if it has a little bit of pine or a softwood conifer mix in there, that's okay, but predominantly you really want it to be hardwoods. And then hardwood wood chips, which again, you can often get free from a local town pile or uh, a mill or someone who's making wood products or sometimes an arborist will sell you wood chips. Uh, again, predominantly hardwoods. Um, if there's some pine mixed in there, that's perfectly fine, but over 50% of it should be a hardwood mix. Um, Freshness is not as important as with some of the log grown. Uh, so anywhere from you know, very recently cut to six months to even a year is probably going to be okay for, for the stropharia. It's much more tolerant. Uh, essentially to inoculate, it's quite simple. It's sort of like creating lasagna. You're just going to layer the different things in your, uh, wherever you want to set these up. One of the nice things about integrating stropharia with other plantings is that if it's dry, you'll likely water those trees or those shrubs or those vegetables and then you can uh, water the stropharia as well. So stropharia uh, for fruiting uh, can be quite exciting because we've seen its fruit as, in as little as two months after inoculation in the right conditions. Um, you can generally pull back the substrate and look for the white mycelium and see how well it's doing. In wetter years, you tend to see it colonize the wood chips very quickly. So once the stropharia has colonized a significant portion of the bed, uh, usually about four feet by four feet, it can often fruit. And the fruitings can be anywhere from one or two mushrooms to uh, a quite a large flush, several pounds of these mushrooms. Um, often you'll see, if you do a spring inoculation, you'll see something that growing season, if not sooner. Um, but sometimes we have seen them be slow to colonize, sometimes in dry years, um, or just for variables we don't even know and those can not fruit till the following season. Uh, but they will overwinter in your, in your mulch as long as there's plenty of, of food for them to eat. Um, as you notice uh, the mushrooms moving through and after fruiting, sometimes you'll notice your wood chips are starting to deplete and, and break down. That's the function of the mushroom itself and can be a benefit to soil health. Uh, but you often want to add fresh wood chips, you know, especially before winter, uh, to protect the mycelium and have future crops. Um, generally, we see them flushing after heavy rain events, um, sometimes when the temperatures are going from cooler to warmer. Um, but again, they're one of those mushrooms that are kind of variable in when they show up, so you've got you to keep an eye out. Uh, usually I recommend that you plant these close to your house or your barn or somewhere that you're going to be traveling routinely so that you know when you don't miss that, that flush of the stropharia.